Welcome back factory owners to part 2 of this mini-series on how to tackle a complex design process like the one of my Gatuino laser toy. This time we're talking about the electronics front plate and how I integrated controls into the device. So let's dive right in. As I usually do, I started with a very simple sketch outlining just the basic design idea. The four squares you can see in each corner are the places meant to be screwed in into the main device. As always, things are subject to change and this is just a very basic design idea. At this point it is just the front cover with no electronics added yet to see how it would integrate into the case. To make everything flush with the case I also chamfered the edges just a tiny bit. In the next step I added a hole and four pins to hold the display in place. Spoiler alert, this didn't work out, but you gotta start somewhere, right? I noticed that having the display on the left side of the sketch actually means it's on the right side on the device. And since most people use their right hand to control things, I wanted to have the controls on the right side, so I moved the display from the left to the right in the sketch. The OLED displays don't always have their pixels perfectly centered in the middle, so I needed to make that opening yet a bit bigger to have every display readable from the outside, regardless of tolerances. I also added a Gatuino logo in big bold letters to have it easily printable and impressed it just a few layers into the design. And don't worry if you don't like logos, since I'm including the step files you don't even need my how to remove logos video. In the next step I did my first attempt of adding mounting points for the PCB. Instead of only having screws in each corner, I opted to have six mounting points to make the board flex as little as possible when the buttons are pressed, which will be added later. Having the OLED display soldered directly onto the board calls for very little tolerances and since this project is meant to be soldered by hand, this is not a very good approach. So I ditched the pins for the display and replaced them with a frame to hold the display in place. Together with a female pin header on the board, this makes for much higher tolerances. Since the board is now quite a bit thicker with the display added, I needed to extend the columns that I used to mount the PCB quite a bit. I created a small bracket for the OLED display to stay at a perfect distance from the PCB. The pins that were formerly on the front plate are now on this bracket. And the two cutouts you can see at the bottom are where the pins of the Arduino are soldered into the board. With the display done, I needed to add the buttons. Since the menu I was using is made for four buttons, this one was set. And I wanted to use a Game Boy style directional pad, because having a larger part makes printing easier and also assembling, since you don't have to fiddle around with four individual buttons. Getting the feeling of the D-pad right took quite a bit of fiddling with the tolerances. But that's the beauty of 3D printing, your next prototype is only a few minutes away. I also added a small chamfer to the opening for the D-pad, in order to prevent it from getting stuck. I did a few experiments with bracing the mounting points for the PCB, but ultimately ditched that idea because I felt they were already strong enough. Oh, and have you noticed how I accidentally added a fillet to one edge of the display frame? I certainly hadn't. To make for a cleaner overall design, I decided to make the PCB a bit wider, so I could have the mounting points at the same position as the screw holes. Since this doesn't affect price, this was a no-brainer for me. For reasons I don't even remember, I decided to move those mounting points yet a bit closer again. I'm pretty sure there was a technical explanation for this decision. Look, I know it took me quite a while, but just about now I realized that putting in every screw from the left side makes those on the far side pretty hard to reach, even with an Allen key with a ball end. So I decided to put screws on the left and the right to mitigate that problem. Since I already needed to change the screw mounting points, I also added a bit of bracing for the front window to prevent it from sliding around. In the current design there was a small gap between the front window and the control panel, so after printing a few prototypes I also added a small lip in order to mitigate that gap. So I want to share a few final lessons learned from integrating the electronics that I haven't touched upon yet. Since I already created a prototype PCB way before I even thought about integrating the electronics into the device, I already had a brief idea of how the PCB should look like. From there I did the design of the front plate first and made the PCB follow that design. To ensure that everything is in the right place, I put a lot of measurements on the PCB. Since it doesn't really matter where you put things on the PCB, I only needed to make sure that the USB port, power switch, display and buttons are in the right place. Everything else was completely free to be put anywhere. Because of the size of the laser cage, the case already had plenty of space for the PCB. For such a rather simple PCB, you only need a few traces that you can move virtually anywhere. The most important thing is that the device is easy to print and assemble. For example, I moved around the solder point for the laser quite a few times. Initially I also thought I needed angled pins to attach the servos, when in reality there was plenty of space in the back of the case. So in short that means get a rough idea of how the PCB should look like, do the 3D design and then try to integrate the electronics. With a simple two layer PCB there's almost always a way to change it to adhere to the 3D design. 
If you haven't heard about Gatuino before and still watched all the way to the end, make sure to check out the link in the description and stay tuned for the next part where I talk about how I designed the case. See you in the next one.